Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about how to solve trigonometric equations of the form sin of x equals sin of alpha where alpha is a known angle. In this video we are going to see how we can solve this type of trigonometric equations. And there are two different ways of solving this type of trigonometric equations. One would be a geometric way and the other one would be an analytic way. I am going to discuss both methods. So let's first start with the geometric way of doing it. Let's take an example. Suppose we have been given a trigonometric equation like this. Sin of x equals 1 half. Can we write it as sin of pi over 6? We know that sin of pi over 6 is equal to 1 half. So here this pi over 6 is similar to the angle alpha that I have in the general form there. Now let's take a look at the unit circle diagram that I have on the screen here. I have picked two points on the unit circle carefully in such a way that their y coordinates will be equal to sin of pi over 6. First is the point P where OP is making a positive angle of pi over 6 with the positive direction of x axis and then OQ is making a positive angle of 5 pi over 6 with the positive direction of the x axis. So for both of these points the y coordinate is equal. It's the same y coordinate because sine ratio is positive in both first and second quadrants. So the y coordinate of P and y coordinate of Q would be equal and that will be equal to sine of pi over 6. So now if we start rotating OP in the counterclockwise direction then what are the angles we are going to get? Well the first angle that we have is pi over 6 and if we rotate it one full circle in the counterclockwise direction and bring it back to the same position then that angle would be 2 pi plus pi over 6 and if we rotate it one more full circle in the counterclockwise direction that angle would be 4 pi plus pi over 6. Now let's look at OQ. OQ is already making an angle which is 5 pi over 6. Can we write 5 pi over 6 as pi minus pi over 6? And then if we rotate that one full circle in the counterclockwise direction that will give us 3 pi minus pi over 6. Every time we will be adding 2 pi. So pi minus pi over 6 now becomes 3 pi minus pi over 6. And then if we rotate it one more time in the counterclockwise direction one full circle that will give us 5 pi minus pi over 6. Now let's think about a negative angle. If we look at OQ and see how much negative angle it's making with the positive direction of x axis. It is actually making a negative angle of this size. Let me denote that with a green arc maybe right here. And that angle is actually negative negative pi and another negative pi over 6 so that would be negative pi minus pi over 6 and then if we rotate OQ one full circle in the clockwise direction that will give us negative 3 pi minus pi over 6 because every time we have to add another negative 2 pi worth of angle. So then after rotating one more full circle in the clockwise direction we are going to get negative 3 pi minus pi over 6. And similarly if we rotate it one more time in the clockwise direction we are going to get negative 5 pi minus pi over 6. Now let's look at the angle made by OP with the positive direction of x axis in the negative sense. So that that negative angle would be negative 2 pi plus pi over 6. If you think of it like that that one full circle but then in the positive direction we have to go another pi over 6 angle then only we are going to reach the position P. So that would be negative 2 pi plus pi over 6. And then if we rotate it one full circle in the clockwise direction it's going to give us negative 4 pi plus pi over 6 because every time we have to add negative 2 pi with the previous angle. Now in both the situations when we are measuring the angle in the positive sense and then when we are measuring the angle in the negative sense in both the situations we can see a pattern here. Now what is the general pattern here? Well you see when the coefficient of pi is an odd number we have a negative sign with the pi over 6. Now first what I am going to do let me replace pi over 6 with alpha. Let's just denote that with alpha right. So here let me denote all of them with alpha. Alright now let's look at the pattern as you can see that when the coefficient of pi is an odd integer we have a negative sign with alpha and when the coefficient of pi is an even integer we have a positive sign with alpha. So can we write a general form like this? In both the cases we can denote this pattern with this general form which is kind of like this. We can write it as n times pi plus negative 1 raised to the power n times alpha where n is an integer. It could be a negative integer, it could be a positive integer, even it could be 0 also. Now let's try to use various integral values for n and see what happens. So when we use n equals 0 then what are we going to get? Well we are just going to get alpha and of course yes alpha is one of the solutions there. 
there, right? And similarly, if we use n as positive 1, we're going to get pi, then minus 1 times alpha, that would be pi minus alpha. And yes, we have that also in our list. Now let's use n as a positive 2, then we're going to get 2 pi plus positive 1 times alpha, that would be 2 pi plus alpha. And yes, of course, we have that in our list as well. Now let's use negative 1 for n, then we're going to get negative pi and then negative 1 raised to the power negative 1, that would give us a minus sign. So that would be negative pi minus alpha. And if we use a negative 2 for n, then we're going to get negative 2 pi plus negative 1 raised to the power negative 2. That will give us a positive sign. So it would be negative 2 pi plus alpha. And yes, of course, that is also in our list. So we can see that no matter what integral value we use for n, this general form is actually giving us all these angles that we have listed up here, right? So we can see that this general form is actually representing all the angles that we have determined geometrically. So we can say that when the trigonometric equation is sine of x equals one half or sine of x equals sine of pi over six, the general solution would be like this. We can write it as x equals n pi plus negative 1 raised to the power n times pi over 6, where n is an integer. So this is the solution of our trigonometric equation that we took in the example, which is sine of x equals 1 half. I hope things are clear up to this point. Now we are going to see the analytic way of finding the solution for this trigonometric equation. Here again, I'm going to write the equation sine of x equals sine of alpha, where alpha is actually pi over 6. That's the given angle in our example, right? So from here, can we bring sine of alpha to the left hand side? So now we have an equation where all the terms are on the left hand side and the right hand side is equal to zero. Now if we can somehow factor the left hand side into two factors, then we can easily solve this equation, right? So let's try to factor it. In trigonometry, we have learned that sine of c minus sine of d can be written as 2 times cosine of c plus d over 2 times sine of c minus d over 2. I have already created separate video on this. I have provided the link in the description. Feel free to watch that video. Now using this formula from trigonometry, in our example, can we write the left hand side like this and the right hand side is actually zero. Now we have been able to convert the left hand side into the factor form and it's now going to be very easy to solve for x. So from here we can say cosine of x plus alpha over 2 equals 0 or sine of x minus alpha over 2 equals 0. Either of the factors could be 0. That's exactly what I have written here. Now from here, let's try to solve each one of them separately. In the previous video, we have seen that when cosine of an angle is equal to 0, we can write the angle like this. In this case, the angle is x plus alpha over 2 and cosine of that angle is equal to 0 here. So we can write that angle as 2n plus 1 times pi over 2. My previous video has a detailed explanation on this topic. Feel free to watch that video. And from here, let's multiply both sides by 2. How do we get? x plus alpha equals 2n plus 1 times pi. And then from here, we can say x is equal to 2n plus 1 times pi minus alpha. And now let's solve for x using the sine ratio here. So from this sine ratio here, we can say that x minus alpha over 2, the angle of the sine ratio is equal to n times pi. I have explained all of these in details in my previous video. Feel free to watch that video. So from here, here we can say that x minus alpha over 2 must be equal to n times pi and if we multiply both sides by a 2 then we can say x minus alpha is equal to 2 n pi and then from here we get x is equal to 2 n pi plus alpha. Now let's look at these two solutions here. In one solution we are seeing that the coefficient of pi is an odd number and alpha has a negative sign and in the other solution we see that the coefficient of pi is an even number and alpha has a positive sign. So here again the same story comes into play. We can say that this can be written as I am now on the left hand side here we can say this can be written as an odd number which is 2n plus 1 times pi and then for the negative sign I am going to write it like this. We can write it as negative 1 raised to the power of an odd number times alpha and similarly here on the right hand side 
I'm going to say well this can be written as 2n times pi plus the positive alpha for the positive sign here I'm going to say okay can we write it as negative 1 raised to an even power which is 2n times alpha now let's compare these two values right here this one and this one you see when the coefficient of pi is an odd number we have a negative sign with alpha and when the coefficient of pi is an even number we have a positive sign with alpha now on the left hand side we have an odd integer and on the right hand side we have an even integer so in general if we combine these two solutions can we write the value of x like this so from here we can say well then x is definitely equal to an integral multiple of pi plus negative 1 raised to the power same integer times alpha think about it when n is an odd integer then alpha will have a negative sign and when n is an even integer alpha will have a positive sign so this general form actually covers both the possible solutions that we got so far so this is going to be the general solution for this equation and of course here n is an integer so let me make a note of that also n belongs to the set of integers so this is the general form of the solution for our example trigonometric equation we can take another example say suppose we have been given an example like this this is actually sin of pi over 4 and for this equation if we assume that pi over 4 is equal to alpha then what would be the solution well we can say the solution is going to be like this x is equal to n pi plus negative 1 raised to the power n times pi over 4 in place of alpha I am using pi over 4 so this is the solution for this trigonometric equation we just have to remember this general form of the solution that if sine of x is equal to sine of alpha when alpha is a given angle of course then the solution is going to be n pi plus negative 1 raised to the power n times alpha where n is an integer it could be a positive integer negative integer or even 0 I hope everything made sense thank you for watching see you in the next video